Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks Plays KSP. This is Interplanetary Voyage Series 2, Episode 7. And in previous episode we have been struck by a tragedy. We have lost three brave Kerbonauts, Jebediah, Bob and Pablo Kerman, who were returning on their mission, their shuttle, the KSO Orbiter, has basically lost the dynamic stability on the re-entry and got disintegrated just above the KSC. Um, we will definitely commemorate their sacrifice. However, uh, at this moment uh, we are preparing another ship, Carborandrum Tanker, which is actually a Carborandrum Particle Collector to be launched in the low Kerbin orbit. And after that, we will be ejecting it to the low solar orbit using the power of the near future magnetoplasmodynamic engines powered by three near future uh, electrical nuclear reactors and also using, using lithium for fuel. So, standard launch, uh, it's a little bit hefty rocket. Uh, we have four of the 3.75 meter boosters, but they are liquid fuel boosters. And then the 5 meter center stack, on top of which our stack is... Oh, and we have some explosions, but nevertheless the central stack is still intact, as it was uh, during our initial tests that we have run. So, burning for the apoapsis of 111, and I think I will make my orbit round, round 130 by 130 or 140 by 140, just to stay clear of the Kerbin uh, Orbital Lab 1 and to be on a little bit higher altitude. 1875 meters per second to burn, trying to align this hefty rocket uh, to point to well, maneuver prograde. And uh, some things about, some facts about this rocket. Uh, our ascent stage has a total of roughly 3.5 thousand delta V altogether, now with 2,077 meters per second to circularize the orbit, which should be enough. And then once we circularize, we will be detaching these boosters and powering up magnetoplasma dynamic engines together with the three nuclear reactors. Uh, if you might be asking, why do we need three? Because each of this uh, near future magnetoplasma dynamic engines requires a total of 3000 electric charge per second. And these, so both of them require a grand total of 6,000 electric charge per second. And each of these nuclear reactors, the flat ones, the 3.75 meter ones, are actually providing 2,000. So, 3 times 2,000 is 6,000. So, 3 nuclear reactors powering 2 magnetoplasma dynamic engines. And I like the way it looks. I mean, it gives it a little bit, you know, futuristic, Star Trek-esque vibe. So, as you can see, and a beautiful plume behind, I mean, it's definitely something to be looked at. But uh, I first wanted to deploy the radiators and I forgot that it might be wiser to deploy the fairings first, so we don't destroy the radiators in the process. Testing the uh, solar panels. Right now we don't need solar panels that much, but uh, uh, first things first, I don't want to be forgetting myself, so I also want to put uh, the um, long-range antenna to connect to the satellite itself, the Kerbin low-range satellite, and then after that I'm kind of enabling the other three um, nuclear reactors. And, uh, yeah, so now we have a 100 by 135, so I do want to fix that a little bit, so it's 135 by 140 or something like that, so that we are slightly higher than the, um, than the Kerbin Orbital Lab 1, just for security reasons, and... Ultimately, for us, it doesn't matter much that it's 100 by 100 
kilometer orbit because those ones we usually use when we're transferring to another planetary body like Eve, Duna, Joule or whatever. And in this case, since we are burning towards the sun, uh, that actually means that we will be performing like almost like a return trajectory. So the same rules apply when you're transferring from Moon to Kerbin as when you are transferring from Kerbin to Sol or Sun. So basically same rules but a little bit more delta V. And coming to the commemoration ceremony, we have all of our Kerbonauts that are currently at the KSC, led by Valentina Kerman, honoring the deed and the sacrifice of Jebediah, Bob, and Pablo Kerman, who, as we mentioned, have tr tragically died on the re-entry when returning the retrograde quarks experiment from the Kerbin Orbital 1. So, Kerbonauts, may the sacrifice of these brave three Kerbonauts be an inspiration to you all. They have done what any of us would do, and they did their job proficiently. They reached for the stars, but they've stepped into the stars themselves. So, Jab... Bob and Pablo, we salute you. And to commemorate uh, your sacrifice, we have built a memorial rocket, a three-stage rocket, one stage for each of our brave Kerbonauts. And uh, the rocket, once launched, will hopefully leave a permanent monument, which we will be placing in the KSC, as a memorial to those three brave souls. So, while launching, we will maintain silence until all three stacks have burned up. Three stacks, one for Pablo, one for Bob, and one for Jebediah. They dared to go into the void, they dared to go into the unknown. So, they have sacrificed their lives in the advancement of science, and their sacrifice shall be remembered. Um, ultimately, the experiment which they were retrieving was not totally lost because if you recall we have analyzed it in the spectrometron and sent the data back to Kerbin. So the next thing that is supposed to happen is we will be launching the eccentric quarks which would hopefully lead to discovery of exotic matter. Okay, popping the fairing and at some point soon I will be deploying the chute, there we go, and seeing that it will only go at 9 meters per second, I will probably time accelerate a little bit, but at the same time I want to rename the vessel to the Jebediah, Bob and Pablo Memorial. And fittingly, it, will, it seems like it's going to land next to the tracking station, so it will be a testament and in the constant view of every brave soul venturing into the into the void of space for for a moment for generations to come. So let us just quickly time accelerate because it doesn't. We don't want the ceremony to take the whole day. We have a busy launch schedule, after all. What can you do? In Kerbal Space Program, things to happen need to happen fast, and we have a limited window on when to launch things. But uh, then again, today, like I mentioned, we will be ejecting the Carborandrum Particle Collector into the low solar orbit. Of course, as soon as this memorial lands.
nice view over the KSC and definitely a fitting location for the memorial of our three brave carbonauts. And... Poof! Here we go. And fittingly, the memorial remains. Perfect. Okay, time to fly the carborandrum particle collector and eject it to the orbit of Sun. To low solar orbit, and by low solar orbit, I mean under the 2 million... 2 million meter mark. So, okay, we are once again in the at the control seat of the probe driving the carborandrum tanker, as we do choose to call it. So the reason why I'm calling this a carborandrum tanker, as you can, or tanker, as you have seen in the Kerbal engineering episode when we were building it, the intent is to use the magnetoplasma dynamic engines to get us one way to the low solar orbit where we will be deploying the particle collector together with a bunch of solar panels uh, which will then help us collect carborandrum particles that are in the low solar orbit and hopefully at the time when when we have completely refilled the, all the carborandrum tanks I expect for this vessel, once it decouples from its transfer stage, to have roughly 162,000 delta V. So, and ultimately its mission will be to decouple from this transfer stage and then return back to the Kerbin and dock with probably the Kerbin Orbital Lab 1, where I will be uh, building the refueling module for the carborandrum fuel. Once, when we actually refuel it, it will once again go back to the low so solar orbit, so it will be basically going back and forth um, refueling our carborandrum, because we do want to have a carborandrum fuel in the low solar, or, or the low carbon orbit at the carbon orbital lab. I think it's a I was thinking to do a separate refueling station, but it doesn't make sense to actually have a separate refueling station and separate um, base. It does make sense on Duna, but not here. Okay, we are we will be using flight computer, and the total burn is 2,931 meters per second, and the estimated burn time will be roughly 12 minutes and 20 seconds. Ultimately, I it will be slightly time accelerated, <clears throat> mainly due to the reason where I really want the long burns to be long burns, but um, I don't want it at one time time acceleration because I think it will be a little bit too boring and too tedious. However, I believe this burn will take a good chunk of this episode, so just a heads up, guys. And while we do burn, I do expect to talk a little bit about some channel updates and also updates to our Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration series, too. So, let us first start burning, and we have engaged, or actually, Flight Computer has engaged the magnetoplasma dynamic engines for a total burn of 12 minutes and the good thing about the flight computer is that I don't have to care and about steering it so I could just disable the UI and let you guys enjoy and appreciate the view which definitely using stock visual enhancements and scatter it does provide a beautiful view to behold like I said, with this twin magnetoplasma dynamic engines, it kind of gives me a little bit of Star Trek-ish vibe. I mean, not really, but still. Looks looks kind of cool. Um, anyway, 
let's talk about first the Interplanetary Voyage Series 2. As I previously mentioned, I was thinking of moving the save to 1.2, uh, and I see that some of the mods at the time of uh, at the time of this recording have updated, but I still want to evaluate when will the change happen. I'm still thinking about switching to 1.2 due to the nicer fonts and uh, nicer, better wheel mechanics for sure, but uh, I still want to leave a little bit of process of debugging to, so it becomes a little bit more stable, that the mods, mods stabilize and everything, because recreating all of the flights that I currently have and putting them in 1.2, because I'm not simply upgrading the save, would take a lot of time and effort for me, and I'm even considering of, you know, switching few mods back and forth. Maybe, you know, stop playing with Remote Tech and playing with ComNet instead, and maybe replace ScanSat with uh, CurbNet, but then again, I'm not really sure how I want to go about it. So, I would obviously want to hear your opinions and comments, that's for sure. Uh, another alternative is to, was I... What I was thinking is to maybe start an alternate save for 1.2 and just go from there. But then again, I already am creating a lot of KSP content, so yeah, that's just for me something that to think about. Obviously, I would be really interested to see, to hear what you guys think about it, but do let me know in the comments, will ya? Okay, um, beautiful screenshot, by the way. One of these will definitely go as the screenshot for the today's episode. Uh, then let's talk a little bit about other channel updates. I have some other series, as you know. Uh, we have uh, Mod Spotlight, which I have neglected a little bit in the past, but I do plan to still continue doing it. Uh, it will be just a little bit less regular basis. Kerbal engineering will of course happen when I have something interesting and big to build, regardless whether it will be in this interplanetary voyage or not. Uh, and uh, obviously interplanetary voyage will continue now for a longer time, hopefully, because I'm really enjoying playing it at 1.1.3. 1. 1. Uh, and uh, as it, for naval action videos, those will be coming a little bit at reduced pace because... I don't have that much time to play it, but also I'm, I'm actually, I, I want to actually have some time for more KSP and uh, XCOM 2 videos. I will still post a ship review here and there, and I'll still post, and I'll still play it for sure, but yeah, slightly reduced pace. And uh, XCOM will continue on Wednesdays, hopefully, as always. Okay. Enjoying the longer burn, as we mentioned, it will be a long burn. And uh, while we're doing so, we might also mention what a few plans I have. As you know, my plans are being dictated by the Kerbal Alarm Clock and the availability of our transfer points, or transfer times. And I believe the next ones to coming are Kerbin to Jewel, Ju Duna to Kerbin, Kerbin to Duna, and then back Duna to and then Kerbin to Eve much later. So first, I plan to resend the Kerbin resupply ship uh, back to the orbit around Jewel with additional maybe Com uh, or Remote Tech satellite relay. So that's one thing that would end up in the Jewel orbit. I don't think this time lathe, but more like Jewel itself. Uh, then I plan to be doing some uh, crew reshuffling in the Duna station. So I will probably be returning, and it will be the maiden voyage of our shuttle Voyager, which is actually just the shuttle to ferry from and to Duna. Um, it's not designed for landing in it. And uh, the other one it will be the Discovery, which is similar to the Voyager, but that one is designed to be able to land on Duna, where we will be setting up, hopefully, a mobile base in the future by using the rovers that, or rover, the first science rover that I've built in one of the previous episodes of the 
Kerbal Engineering. So the science rover will come first. Then I plan to maybe build a refueling rover since we already have a mining operation set up there for the carb carbonite. So I need uh, some method of refueling the landers and such. And uh, then I'm planning to probably go for uncovering the secrets of the exotic matter, maybe an Alcubier drive or something flung to the test run, maybe to Jewel or somewhere else. I'll still, still have to figure out where and then we'll just take it from there, I guess. So that's the plan. The plan still remains to make a base on Duna. Uh, it, it does take a, f a few episodes for me. I mean, I'm pretty new to the surface base building. So for my first base will probably be some rovers connected. But I fully plan to use the power of the OKS, UKS, MKS, whichever KS there is from Umbra Space Industries and their corresponding freight technologies and rovers, etc., etc. So for those, I plan to... It will take some decent portion of next batch of episodes to actually do these as well. I'm still committed to the exploration and we have barely touched the outer planets, but it does take a long time to get to those outer planets. So, yeah. Oh, beautiful screenshot. And guys, I'm gonna let you enjoy us burning away from Kerbin, or not burning, but slowly leaving the Kerbin's SOI as our episode draws to a close. So, admiring the lens flare of the sun, which is ultimately our destination, and just enjoying as Kerbin, Moon and Minmus slowly fade against the black backdrop of space. Okay. With that thing in mind, guys, uh, we will be leaving the Sphere of Influence. No need for you guys to see the, me leaving Sphere of Influence. you already seen it many times and I just think it becomes boring and tedious. So we opened this guy and I'll bid you all, guys, farewell. Like if you like, hit subscribe for more KSP content that is coming soon. And thank you again for watching. This is Groundworks signing off from leaving the Kerbin SOI.